We're here for Historical Resources Management Commission 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> um, all right. So it is 7 o'clock. Um, let the record show, and I will go do a roll call of the commissioners present. Um, Commissioner Davis. Actually, I know Commissioner Davis had communicated with me. He is not present. Commissioner Hickman? Present. Commissioner Jacobs? Present. Commissioner Allen? I mean, uh, Lowry? Uh, present. <laughs> Allen? Uh, Commissioner Van Meter? Present. Uh, Commissioner Montgomery? Present. Uh, Commissioner Juan? Present. Ah, very good. Okay. So we have everyone. All right. For uh, those of you who are... Um, Joining us, members of the public um, and others, there was a um, there was a bit of a snafu with the Zoom uh, meeting from our our usual Monday meeting and was recalendered, rescheduled for uh, tonight. Um, if you didn't get opportunity to call in, uh, my apologies for the um, for the for the mistake. Um, I hope you have an opportunity to speak tonight. Um, Couple things before we begin. Uh, for those of you who weren't able to be on the call the last time, uh, one, first of all, if you are calling in, uh, when we get to the point of public comment, you'll need to press star nine uh, to effectively raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, um, if you're in Zoom, there is a there is a raise your hand button. Um, all right, so we're going to do this all all over again from we covered last time. Um, so having brought us to order. Taking the roll call is uh, incidentally is is council liaison here? Just wanted to see. No. Okay. And uh, I don't see Ike uh, either, but I know Julie's here. All right. Um, hopefully we will get staff um, here as well if necessary. Okay. All right. Before so you continue, um, Ike is having some connection issues, but he is trying to log on, um, try his cell phone, and he's going to try that way and see okay. if that works. Okay, great, great. It's just good to have staff on on hand if there's any questions, particularly if the public has any questions. Uh, thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Um, all right. So with that preamble and uh, with the commission assembled, I'll accept a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Hickman. Second. Second by Third. Commissioner Jacobs. Third, Third by Commissioner Lowry. Okay, we'll do once again roll call. Um, Commissioner Hickman? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Commissioner Lowry? Aye. Commissioner Van Meter? Aye. Commissioner Montgomery? Aye. Commissioner Wan? Commissioner Wan? Looks like we lost her to the attendee yes. part. I think... What's happening is um, one, one of them, Ike or Commissioner Wong, is trying to log on as each other. And so that's what's causing the problem. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I think we could still move on on that sufficient number of votes to for approval of the agenda. Okay. Um, all right. Item number three, public comment. Uh, at this time, members of the public, anyone who's in attendance, may speak to the commission on matters that aren't on the agenda. Is there anybody here who um, has an item that's not on the agenda that they would like to speak on? All right, I don't, I don't see any raised hands. Julie, do you see anyone? Uh, once again, um, if you're calling in, you'll need to press star nine uh, to speak. Do you have a? No. All right. Um, hearing no public comments, we'll move right on to uh, the consent calendar. Uh, consent calendar items are considered non-controversial and routine. In this instance, we have only one item on the consent calendar, and that's approval of our April 20th uh, minutes. I'll accept a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved. 
Moved by Commissioner Lowry. Second. Seconded. <laughs> no, I'll give it to Commissioner Hickman. Um, faster on the buzzer. Uh, once again, we'll do a roll call. Um, Commissioner Hickman. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Commissioner Lowry. Aye. Commissioner Van Meter. Aye. Commissioner Montgomery. Aye. Commissioner Wan. Very good. Okay. Consent calendar. Uh, minutes approved. All right. Item moving on. Item number five. Excuse me. This is the time for the Haiti Weber Museum Report. Um, is there anyone in attendance uh, to offer uh, the museum report? Again, if you're, if you're calling in, you'll want to do star nine. Uh, otherwise, use the raise your hand function on Zoom. No? All right. No one for the museum report. Okay. So now we come to uh, the main event. Um, item 6A, 420 I Street. This is planning application number 19-47 for design review number 16-20 and demolition to accommodate the proposed bedroom, one and a half bathroom, plus a rear porch addition, the Nuro residence project. And I could see uh, uh, Mr. Nuro, you are, you are present. Um, here's what I'm thinking we might do is just have you, and we did this on Monday, but for you just to briefly uh, talk about uh, the project. Uh, we could see if staff wants that at anything. That and then you can take that All right, you ready for me? For me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Oh, somebody's not muted. There we go. Um, so first of all, thank you guys. Appreciate the opportunity to do the uh, the dry run the other day. That was that was helpful. <laughs> We're glad we could accommodate you. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm all all uh, just like we practiced. I'll do the I'll do the same thing. I'll give you guys a a real brief overview of the project and. Um, and before I do that, I'll give you the quick, uh, the quick update of, of why this got kind of turfed for uh, or put on hold for a bit. And, and what we did, you all saw the, the, the plans that we submit or the, the plans that we submitted preliminarily last, uh, I think it was last early summer or late spring um, in that time frame. And then uh, we had some neighborhood meet, well, we had neighborhood, um, some neighborhood input prior to that and then we had a, a neighborhood group meeting i think somewhere during that process and and we got comments from a uh, subcommittee of, of of your guys's commission and and we took some of that into account but the main reason we got put on hold was we we ran into some issues with the foundation and realized we we're gonna have to do a lot more work on the foundation so we went back to the drawing board made some changes based on the, the structural design made some changes based on living with the plan for a bit and then made some changes, all my, relatively minor changes, based on on your guys's input and the, and the neighborhood input. And what we what we came up with is the the plans that, that you've got in front of you. An overview of the project as it's currently drawn, or or as we're as we're uh, we're applying for, for approval right now, is that we're gonna we're gonna take this 1885 house that has got some additions, multiple additions on it that have, that have been put on. You know, over over the course of the last uh, century or so, some some we're not really sure when they've all been added on, but um, most of them are in pretty poor shape. The the bones of the original house are in great shape. The foundation's in terrible shape, and uh, these old additions are are just not a lot of not a lot of value, either architectural value or or um, structural value. So, our plan is to demolish the um, the addition that is to the on the on the east side of the building and demolish the addition that is on the north side of the building. Um, a little bit of, of the 1800s building is gonna be demolished and, and we're not exactly sure even after having a number of architects and historians take a look at it, we're not exactly sure if that's an original piece or if that's a really early addition. But anyways, it's sort of a mute point. So we're gonna, we're gonna um, demolish that, that little section of wall. We're gonna lift up what's remaining of the 1885 building. We're gonna pour a new foundation on it and we're gonna set it back on top of the new foundation in the exact spot that it sits with the uh, porch to whatever extent we can save a as is right now. And, and hopefully if, if we can't, if some of that, you know, if some of that porch doesn't make it through that process, it'll be rebuilt as it, as it currently sits. So the, 
1885 building's shape will exist as it as it does today. Um, as I as I mentioned over uh, you know the other day on our on our dry run and also in the early part of this um, last last summer when I when I talked to a number of you, the exterior finishes on the on the house are are not original. None of the windows are original. The siding's not original. The roofing's not original. Um, the front door I don't believe is original, but it's certainly older than the rest of that stuff. The existing windows are all aluminum frame, dual pane, probably from the 1980s. They're all failing. The siding that's on it right now is all uh, shiplap siding that's pine, pine kind of low quality, but but solid wood anyway. Shiplap siding all the way around it. We believe that was put on sometime in the in the 1880s. And uh, there's there's some pictures of the house in Commissioner Hickman's report. There's at least eight, one picture in there, and, and we've seen some other pictures of it from. Um, before that work and it and it had a, a different siding on it so we know it's all been replaced. Um, anyways the plan is pick the building up set it back down and then we're going to build a uh, addition to the rear a uh, two-story addition. When we designed the addition and, and as we led up to the design of the addition we we spent a whole lot of time with the downtown traditional neighborhood design um, design guideline document, big heavy thick doc document. And we essentially use those guidelines as our, as our guidelines to, to put, the, put the plan together. Um, when we're all done with, with this, what we think we're gonna, we'll, we'll have, or what, what this plan will we'll put together is a, you know, a nice two story single family house, relatively, you know, certainly not huge, definitely a little bigger than it is now, but not huge. We think it'll fit well in the neighborhood. We think it'll be complementary to both the, the character and um, um, the character of the existing building that we're adding on to, and the character of the historic houses that are that are nearby, both the actual real historic value resources that you guys have identified um, or, or register resources. And there's a number of small um, houses that may not be registered, but I think contribute to the to the neighborhood. And I think this this project will contribute to the neighborhood positively when when we're done with it. Um, so that the the exterior finishes will all be um, continuous all the way around the house. It'll be ship, uh, not ship up. It'll be uh, hardy plank, uh, lap siding. It'll be Anderson windows. It'll be a comp roof. Um, you know, and and we hope relatively nicely done, but modest budget type type finishes that I think that I think complement the 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 design, the you know the look of the exterior design. I think they complement the the neighborhood in general, and I think they're completely 100% consistent with what's in the design guidelines. So um, I think that's about what I got. And what, one more thing I think is, may not be specifically relevant to the historic character of the house or the, or the historic part of all this, but what we're trying to do is build a house that's, that's livable. We plan to stay here with our family and stay in the neighborhood, and, and we're trying to do that without, without having to, without building something that's that's uh, completely out of character and, and, and um, doesn't work with the, with the nearby building. Uh, one last piece of all this, we engaged all of, the, all of the immediate neighbors and the neighborhood in general and took all of their um, input into consideration as we made the design and, and um, the immediate neighbors to the, to the south and to the north both um, had significant um, input into, into how we designed this and Neither one of them have objected to what we what we finally come up with. So, with that, I'll uh, I'll leave it to you guys to ask questions. Oh, very good. Th thank you, and I should say thank you for coming back and, and doing this again for us. Um, so, uh, let me just turn over to staff. Does staff have anything they want to add? No, not at this point. Okay. Um, does uh, is there any member of the public who would like to speak on this project who's available? Uh, again, if you're calling in, you'll want to do start nine to raise your hand, um, or if you're joining us through Zoom, um, connect, uh, select the raise your hand function. I do see Larry Gunther has raised his hand. Okay. All right, Larry, go ahead. Larry, you're all set. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you guys so much for um Sorry, thank you all for so much for uh, doing this, for doing what you do, and um, for having this meeting and rescheduling, uh, given the situation. 
Uh, so I am Larry Gunther, president of the Old East Davis Neighborhood Association, and I, a lot of this is reiterative um, of what Alex spoke of. He did reach out to, uh, well, he and Christine did reach out to the neighborhood, and the neighbors uh, made sure that we were all cool with it. Um, and basically, I just am here to report that um, the neighborhood is all cool with it. And we would just like to give our support to this project and hope it moves forward. And again, thank you very much for doing what you do. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, is there any other member of the public who'd like to speak? I managed to misplace my list of attendees, Julie, but I don't. Uh, so do you see anybody? I don't see anyone else now. Okay. All right. Well, with that, let me turn it over to the commission. Does the commission have any commissioners have any questions they want to ask at this time? I know we asked questions last time, but observing the forms. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand. So with with that, what I what I would like to propose in the interest of efficiency is there are four items that we're being asked to take action on. Uh, what I would propose that we do is we move in a single motion to accept the staff recommendations, which touch on all four of these, and uh, vote on that. Are there any objections to that approach? <clears throat> I would move I that. accept the motion to move the staff recommendations. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Hickman. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lowry. We'll do a roll call. Commissioner Hickman? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Commissioner Lowry? Aye. Commissioner Van Meter? Aye. Commissioner Montgomery? Aye. Commissioner Wan? Commissioner Wan, you're on mute, but I saw you say aye. Aye. Very good. Uh, and I am an aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. Very very good luck to you, uh, Mr. Nero. I hope you have a, a lovely home in the end, something you really like. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're most welcome. All right. Uh, if my wife is trying to distract me, so I just want to let that be known because if it's anything's passing on my face, she's on the other side. So, okay. Uh, moving right along, um, item 6B410 K Street. Now she's giving me another look because I called her out on it. Um, Item is 6B, 410K Street. This is planning application number 20-12 for design review number 4-20 and demolition to accommodate a bedroom, bathroom addition, and an increased porch for the temple residence additions and renovation project. Uh, I think we'd like to do the same thing as we did before. Give uh, Ms. Dubin um, or, and or Ms. Temple an opportunity to speak on the project. Excuse me. Then ask if, if staff is anything to contribute. Then ask if there's anything uh, that the public would like to offer. So with that, um, I see Ms. Dubin, you're, you're unmuted and you're ready to go. I am. Um, Julie, can I have uh, permission to share screen? Absolutely. I just gave you permission. You're all good. That dry run is smoothing, smoothing the pace. No, we're just whipping through this. Okay. Get the stuff out of the way. So you should be able to see my PowerPoint, and it should look eerily familiar. Um, this is a 600 square foot uh, minimal traditional home, one bedroom, one bath home, built in 1946, uh, 410 K Street, owned by Anna Ruth Temple. And um, here is a context map, so you can see it right around the corner from the previous uh, applicant. Um, it has a, it currently has a comp shingle roof and um, what looks like the original cement asbestos siding. And uh, when my client came to me, she wanted to have a little more room to spread out in this small house. And so we devised a plan that would, uh, the largest single piece of the plan is to add a uh, one bedroom, one bath addition to the back. 
and to do some interior remodeling of the existing footprint. And the front porch is to remain in concept, but we'll have to remove it physically in order to uh, pour a new slab that's not damaged. Um, and probably we, the plans show extending the slab about 18 inches to accommodate um, more substantial framing to hold the porch up. And I'll get to that in the next slide. Uh, this slide shows <coughs> that there is um, there, there's a tremendous amount of rot and, and sagging going on on the porches, although the house itself seems to be in reasonable shape structurally uh, because the foundation has managed to do better than many of its friends in Central Davis. Um, so this is the little porch lid on the back that should be condemned because it's about to fall down. Um, and you can see the front porch is slab, uh, the slab is cracked. Um, so the idea here is to um, leave the existing detached garage, that's not in the scope of the project. Um, the, the image on the left shows the existing, so here you see the back porchlet and then the front porch here. This is the front view, the current uh, front porch is a little shed roof held up by four four by four columns and on the right you see the addition which is just a cross gable on the back and you can see that we have some uh, more substantial looking porch framing and the next slide will emphasize that what we intend to do is to bring the entire footprint of the home, including the front porch, under one simple gable rather than um, the way it is existing where you have a gable over the conditioned space and then a little, a little shed roof with a low slope that comes off on the front. Um, the image on your right shows a proposed uh, material study for the new appearance. Um, all of the windows will be replaced and the windows and doors on the front facade will stay exactly where they are. Um, the front door will be replaced with a, a door that is a little more attractive than the current raised panel door. Um, the double hung windows on the front will remain the same in size and function, but there'll be new uh, aluminum clad wood windows. Um, and as I mentioned uh, in the last round, the, the windows along the side and the back will be casements because they, they facilitate egress uh, with a much smaller overall unit. And you probably already know this, but a, a double hung window has to be enormous in order to get an egressible double hung window because the, the ventable area is only the bottom half. Uh, so if we can use casements, for the bedroom in the back, we'll be able to have sort of normal sized windows. Um, we spoke last time a little bit about the potential concern of the neighbors, which I think was sort of allayed by the discussion that we had and, and um, may not have been a, a, a big point, but I'll, I'll bring it up again because it was pretty much the interesting part of the conversation, which is how do you um, take a 600 square foot really, really minimal structure and uh, make it livable for a current owner in 2020 um, without being imitative of a style that it isn't, right? And in this case, I think we did a good job of, of um, you know, taking a tip from some of the craftsman era properties without actually imitating the craftsman features. So. For example, across the street, there are some jerkin roofs with uh, corbels, and we didn't borrow any of that. But what we are doing is just trying to, to take the notion that the porch itself can have a little more enclosure and can have a little more substance. Um, and the gable itself, the main gable can come out and cover the porch as well as just the footprint of the house. Um, so, I believe that is the condensed version of my presentation.
I muted myself. All right. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So, uh, staff, do you have anything to add? Excuse me. Not at this point. Um, I would answer questions afterwards. Okay. Um, all right. So let me turn it over to uh, any members of the public who are here to speak or have comments on, on the project or questions. Uh, once again, if you're calling in, you'll want to do star nine. Uh, if you're joining us through Zoom, use the raise your hand function. And as I said, Julia, I managed somewhere on my desktop to misplace the list of attendees. So um, I'm certain they're here somewhere. Um, and people who are here, is there anyone who has their hand raised that you can see? Yes, Larry Gunther has raised his hand. And oh. I can allow him to speak now Very good. if you're ready. You. Okay, here you go. Larry, you're on. Hi, Larry. Long time no see. Yes, <laughs> or no here anyway. <laughs> um, so what, what I'm doing tonight is proving to the community that this neighborhood is not against every project that comes through. Uh, that's a big part of what we're doing here. Um, but... We are in support. Uh, again, Larry Gunther, sorry, president of Old East Davis Neighborhood Association, speaking on behalf of the Neighborhood Association. Uh, we did have meetings about this project as well, and we are uh, in favor. So um, the architect posted the, the real point um, that I wanted to bring up, which we did have a big discussion on architectural kind of what's the difference between fitting in and copying um, and there were very much different views expressed by different um, neighbors on how far you should go in that. And what we were all in favor of, however, is the um, HRMC's expertise on this question and leaving, deferring to the commission what the best path to go for is. Um, and so at speaking as a representative of the neighborhood association um, that seems to sum it up. We are, we're happy with, with the project and uh, we are very grateful that they're making our neighborhood look better. So thank you all uh, for, for everybody involved. All right. And, and thank, thank you, Larry. Um, I think it's, I just want to take the opportunity just very briefly to thank old East uh, Old East is a really engaged neighborhood association. I think it's very helpful to have these kinds of comments in your level of engagement. So I want to thank you, um, you, Old North, and other other associations that are in, in town. Uh, so thank you. Uh, is there anybody else uh, here to, uh, to have comments or questions of this project? I don't see anyone else has raised their hands. Okay. All right. Well, with that, uh, what I'd like to do is, well, first of all, are there any commissioners with any questions or comments of the applicant of the project, of staff? Are you talking about uh, comments on the design? Uh, on, on the project, I and mean, one of the things we're being asked to do is provide advisory input. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's comments, I'd like to get them on the record. So, yeah. All right. So um, one thing that has come up, already is the question about whether, sorry, um, whether, just a moment, please. I think the dog disagrees, Commissioner Lowry. <laughs> I think your dog disagrees with you. He has no manners. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so the question that has come up is whether the house in attempting to fit better into the neighborhood should should uh, change its design uh, toward a more historic feel. And I would like to suggest that the, the perhaps the city does not have, commission does not have an expectation that, that the um, owner will do that. And that, that um, in the in, in interest of avoiding a false historicism, as we talked about before, um, there's no expectation that the, that the design would would change dramatically toward historic features. Um, it, it's I'm sure it's permissible to do that, but um, the it's possible to go too far uh, in in that direction. Um, so we, we, one of the things we've talked about was 
the tapered columns, which is a craftsman issue, it's a craftsman stylistic issue, and the base of the columns. Um, so I, did, I, I per, as a commissioner, I would like to suggest that it's, it's not expected that the design would change toward a historic quality um, and, and, it's, and that it's possible to get a little too far. I'm done. Okay. Would you like to comment on that? Uh, sure. Um, I don't know if it's even necessary to comment or if this is just for the record, but you probably, commissioners, see this type of attempt um, often enough, right? Because there are a lot of projects that may fall into this category of almost stylist traditional minimal structures. And um, I really think this is, this is kind of a, a sticky or tricky thing to navigate. It's really difficult to um, try to come up with solutions that are not related to any style that's ever been done before. Like if I put shingles on it, is it shingle style? The answer is no, it's not. It's the building with shingles on it. And so I'll maintain that the craftsman designers didn't invent the tapered column, right? Like the Greeks probably invented it. And I, um, I think what we're doing when we try to make these distinctions is really difficult. And it's an, it's an art, you know, to look at it and say, like, on the whole, is this um, imitative or is it uh, deceptive? Um, but, you know, to look at an individual detail and say, oh, that's from this period or that's from that period. Um, I think when Anna and I were looking at this and we, we created these built up columns, I don't think we were overtly thinking craftsmen, right? We were thinking, let's make something that responds to the human scale, right? It's not just one skinny four by four post. It has body parts like a person and, and this is pleasing to humans, right? So that's my, my architect spiel about it. And, um, you know, we'll all continue to struggle with this issue over and over again as long as we do these kinds of projects. You know, I, I just uh, as a comment myself, um, I mean, I, I would agree it's 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 a challenge, right? I mean, there's there's certain aesthetic elements that are appealing, and it, it is that you'd want you'd want to see incorporated. That if taken too far, create as we talked about previously this false historicity. Um, my sense from the commission from our previous discussion, and I, I don't. I don't want to put my thumb on the scale here. And I don't open up to the rest of the commission, but my sense of our previous discussion was that a lot of our concerns were allied on that point. And speaking to the question that Old East had posed, you know, putting it to us, to for our expertise, um, I don't recall our, in our last meeting, our initial meeting, first meeting, um, that there was any, but by the end, that there was that same sense of concern that this had gone. It was potentially misleading um, and, and out of character. That being said, I want to put it out to the rest of the commissioners if there's any comments that they want to have on the record, any questions they want to ask of the applicant, any any input they might be able to provide, any input they feel necessary to provide. Chairperson, um, would you like to go by roll call so that everyone has a chance to speak? Uh, do, do, to poll everyone individually? Yes. We we can do that. We didn't do that last time. I mean, I, um, I we certainly could do that just to be sure. So, um, Commissioner Hickman, do you have any comments? I, I guess I have one question. It's mostly about the process here. I mean, we had a fairly extensive discussion about this last time. Is that going to be reflected in the minutes that that we we discussed this issue, et cetera, or do we do we wipe the minutes clean and this is a new meeting? Yeah, because there was no meeting yes um, on Monday, so we couldn't go back to it. That's that's like it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It, it, the meeting that occurred Monday didn't happen, so we couldn't, you know what I'm saying, we couldn't lift from there. And we call it a rerun. So this is a, that was a pre-trial, and we got a feel for what we could say now. So that's one of the reasons I'm suggesting, you know, maybe individual commissioners, you can process your thoughts based on that trial run that we had, and then make your comments as you see appropriate in light of what you know. 
Okay. I think about how to phrase this. Then. I mean, I, I think we, we acknowledge the concern that was expressed by the Old East Davis neighborhood. Um, a couple of commissioners echoed that that concern. Um, after extensive discussion, we we felt like the issue had been resolved, and we were made a decision to leave it as informal uh, advice input, um, but not as a formal requirement for the city. Nothing that required the planning commission to relook this issue. That we we were happy with what we heard from the applicants, um, and are, are prepared for the project to go forward if they see best fit. That that's that would be your summary of the um, of what we spoke about the first time. That that's my summary and it's my position today. Very yeah. good. If I might, just to help us for the record, um, since that meeting didn't really occur, you know, if we could phrase <laughs> phrase it in a manner that sort of presents it as if it's your new perspective, so to speak, rather than summarize what previously took place, because when we draft the minutes, we would all be saying. The meeting that didn't occur was this, and he concurs with that. <laughs> I don't think that would be right. Yeah, that's 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 fair. That's fair, Ike. Although one of the things I think we need to be cognizant of, and I'm just going to put this on the record, is that there was a discussion. My 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 experience of last meeting was that there was a discussion, there was concerns expressed, and at the end we had come to a place. And so it seems a little a, a little like um, kabuki theater, if you will. To, to replay that because um, well, I, I my, my, my comments aren't aren't the same now be, in part because we had that conversation I, I, you know, going to a commission what I'm suggesting though is not that what I'm suggesting is having the knowledge that you do have you know for instance uh, as Commissioner Larry was saying you know he sort of believed based on the previous information that never occurred and what we've had tonight that you know the question of force historicity is something that uh, he feels is a concern, but it's not a major concern, and therefore he's not, you know, going to spend time on it. And that's a comment. Then we can write that in our minutes as that's his position without having to make reference to the meeting that. I see. I see. I see. I follow you. Okay. So uh, with with that with that, Commissioner Rickman, is there anything you want to? Just a uh, reframe. I, I mean, I think I would say that I, I recognize the concern that was expressed by the old East old Davis neighborhood. I, I think there can be some concern with misreading that porch, perhaps, as being more craftsmanlike than it's intended to be. Um, I, I think some of that may have to do with just the way in which the elevations are represented in the drawings. Um, we've heard quite a bit from the applicants now and that, that they don't see that occurring. I recognize the answer that's been given and, and, and more or less agree with it, that this is not a major, they're not trying to, craft, they're not trying to create a craftsman residence. That, 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 that a couple of porch columns are not going to turn this into a, a craftsman bungalow. Um, I'm happy with the project as it's been presented, and I, I don't think there's any need for this commission to be further involved in design decisions for it. Is okay. that good? <laughs> it works. It works. It works for me. It works for me. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Jacobs, anything you want to add? Um, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lowry? The only reason I mentioned that is I, I assumed that the first meeting didn't happen and I wanted to uh, clarify, or sort, of, sort of summarize our, our conclusion that that there's a concern, but um, that we were not requiring any, um, you know, move toward historic appearance, but that's all. And um, we, you know, I, I think that the design is acceptable. No, no problem with it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Van Meter. Um, I guess I will offer the same comment that I offered at the previous meeting, um, just as advisory input, um, not as a requirement, but, that if uh, the architect uh, were to, um, one way that that the the porch could be uh, less overtly craftsman, um, they could change the um, the columns to be um, square as opposed to tapered. Okay. And then uh, beyond that, I don't have any additional comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Montgomery. I have no comments. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wan. 
Uh, no comments. Uh, all right. And the only comments that I have would be to just say concur to all the previous comments. Um, you know, I, I think that that false historicity is, is one uh, issue that this commission deals with. Um, and it's it's a concern as as the city moves forward, as it develops. I don't see it as pressing a concern in this instance. Uh, acknowledging that a suggestion by Commissioner Van Meter is potentially a good one. If we want, just want to kind of move it slightly, want, you know, a little bit, maybe just a little bit less, you know, but not, not make it a condition of approval, certainly. Um, all right. Um, anything else? Uh, because what I'd like to do is then do what we did last time and just take up the staff, rec staff recommendations, excuse me, as, as a, uh, that we adopt the staff recommendations and move that forward. If that's if that's agreeable, I will accept a motion on that point. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Lowry. Seconded. Van Meter. Seconded by Commissioner Van Meter. We'll do a roll call. Commissioner Hickman. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Commissioner Lowry. Aye. Commissioner Van Meter. Aye. Commissioner Montgomery. Aye. Commissioner Wan. Aye. And I am an aye as well. Um, it carries. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dubin and Ms. Temple. Uh, best of luck uh, with the additions and changes. Thank you. All right. Um, so item number, moving right along, item number seven, brief announcements from staff, commissioners, and liaisons. Does staff have any um, uh, announcements? None at this time. Okay. Um, I just have one. I'm going to jump in here and just, I just want to say a couple things. One, I want to thank everyone. I should have done this at the beginning. I want to thank everyone for doing this again. Um, I know it's, um, it was a drag. We went through all this and then we had to come back and do it. But I, I, I'm, I appreciate everyone coming back to do it and giving of your time. Um, as I think I told Commissioner Davis, who wasn't able to join us, um, as far as I'm concerned, we, we, you gave your commitment to the city. And so I feel you're giving more. And I just, I, I thank you as, as just as a citizen, I thank you all for being here. Um, and then I also just want to, for the record, because I did it last time, thank Commissioner Hickman for doing those updates. I think those were very helpful. Um, and uh, I, it's a, I'm glad we had something we can do as, as a commission individually um, to, to help um, applicants. So that's all I have. Otherwise, um, is anybody else have anything? No. Boy, this is the fastest, I think, meeting we've ever had. So with that, um, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Hickman. Second. Second by Commissioner Lowry. Okay. Roll call again. Aye. Wait, who is that? Hickman. Okay. First. Commissioner Hickman. Aye. Okay. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Commissioner Lowry. Aye. Commissioner Van Meter. Aye. Commissioner Montgomery. Aye. Commissioner Wan. Aye. All right, and I'm an I as well. Thank you again, everybody. We'll see you next month. Thank you, everyone. Good job, you guys. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.